Hi, welcome to the first installment of Idaho Fish and Games, the State of Deer and Elk informational series. Over the next couple of videos, we'll be talking about how IDFG monitors deer and elk populations in the state. So we thought the best place to start would be to tell you what we mean by population and why understanding populations is important to the management of these species. First off, what do we mean by a population? Basically, it's all individuals from a species that live in the same area. This is important for managers to understand because animals in the same population typically have similar habitat quality available to them and are exposed to similar weather and risks, like predation. These factors can vary significantly between different populations. For example, mule deer in some parts of Idaho are primarily limited by severe winter conditions, while severe winters only rarely have population level impacts on deer in other parts of the state. More on that to come in a future video. Additionally, most deer and elk in Idaho are at least somewhat migratory, meaning they move across the landscape, some for dozens of miles, to avoid severe winter conditions and take advantage of available food. This means that in some populations, animals aren't in the same area during the fall hunting season as they are when we survey them in the winter or summer. All in all, understanding which animals form populations and how those populations move makes our management more effective. So how do we figure out which animals form a population and how that population moves? IDFG has used a variety of methods in the past, but the advancement of Global Positioning System Technology, or GPS as you may have heard of it, for wildlife monitoring has dramatically increased our understanding of deer and elk movements in the state. IDFG captures and marks deer and elk with GPS collars for a variety of reasons, but all of these marked animals help us better understand populations and their movements. Here you're seeing video of our helicopter capture crew darting a cow elk in North Idaho. We placed a GPS collar on this cow and then reversed the effects of the drugs with a second injection. A couple minutes later, she is up and off. Our GPS collars record the animal's location multiple times per day for up to two years and transmits the data to us through a satellite system. As an example of the information we get from these collars, I'm gonna show you an animation of collar data collected from 24 individual mule deer on the Sand Creek Desert Winter Range northeast of Idaho Falls. After collaring, these deer move around the sagebrush and juniper habitats of the Sand Creek Winter Range during the remainder of the winter. As the winter gives way to spring, the migrating deer begin to move to the northeast, taking advantage of spring vegetation green up as winter snows recede. They spend summer in high elevation habitats, taking advantage of vegetation that stays green long into the summer, before shortened days and changing weather signal their fall departure back towards winter range. The overall annual movements of all collared individuals helps us understand this population's boundaries for survey efforts and their seasonal movements relative to hunting seasons. We've used, this, we've used the same methods and data I just showed for the Sand Creek mule deer population to monitor the seasonal movements of mule deer throughout much of southern Idaho. This movement information helped us define populations, shown here in different colors, with specific management directions and strategies in our 2020 to 2025 mule deer management plan. We are also monitoring the seasonal movements of elk throughout the state. As an example, I'll once again show data collected from Sand Creek, northeast of Idaho Falls. This time the movement data is from 18 collared cow elk. After capture, the collared elk move around the sagebrush habitats of the Sand Creek Winter Range for the remainder of the winter. As the snow recedes, they move to the north and east to higher elevation summer ranges. Once, the summer, once on summer range, elk tend to move around a bit more than mule deer. Most mule deer and elk at Sand Creek migrate each spring and fall, though the timing can be slightly different between the species, since deer are smaller and less able to navigate in deep snow. Like mule deer, like mule deer the overall annual movements of all collared elk help us understand this population's boundaries for survey efforts and their seasonal movements relative to hunting seasons. We've used the methods and data I just showed for the Sand Creek elk population to monitor the seasonal movements of several of Idaho's elk populations with data collection in additional areas currently ongoing. We will use this information to help us define elk populations with specific management directions and strategies in the upcoming revision of IDFG's statewide elk management plan. 
Thank you for joining me to talk about Idaho's deer and elk populations. Please check back frequently to our IDFG webpage for more on the State of Deer and Elk series. In our next installment, we will take a look at the methods IDFG uses to monitor these deer and elk populations throughout the state. See you soon.